greetings um, from the Leonard Cheshire um, group. Today we are here to present to you uh, this, uh, pre the, this, uh, this morning or this afternoon or this evening, depending on where you are, uh, on the topic accessible learning for an inclusive work workforce, lessons and be best practices. My name is Elizabeth Shakamiri, Program Manager, uh, Innovation to Inclusion Project and based in Kenya. With me is my colleague who will be able to uh, introduce himself too. Hello, my name is Angel Perez. I'm the Senior Technology and Innovation Lead for the program that we run, the I2I, and I work for Lena Chesh. Thank you. Thank you, Angel. Um, in this presentation, we've divided it into six portions. Uh, just to guide us through and for us to be able to showcase to you what does accessible learning, uh, e-learning modules are for us uh, from the project that we did and also for you to be able to, to see and uh, uh, appreciate what we were able to do. First, we'll take you through the I2I program. The I2I is the acronym for Innovation to Inclusion. We'll take you through the Digital Employment Pathway Model and we'll give you an example from Kenya, from the National Council for Persons with Disabilities Career Portal. We'll also take you through what were our processes as concerns uh, accessible e-learning and also the user feedback and key learnings that we got from the project and more so from the e-learning uh, modules uh, deliverable and all, as well as uh, give you the conclusions from the project. The I2I program, um, next please. The I2I program um, is a pro project that sought to see how do persons with disabilities using their, using their experiences, using their needs, using their aspirations, using their interests, how we could be able to deliver direct and sustainable change to job seekers, persons who are either diploma holders, certificate holders, or graduates within uh, Bangladesh and Kenya countries to see if at all through technology, through innovation, we could be able to promote the access to jobs and also promote the retention and, uh, and uh, progression of persons with disabilities within workplaces. Uh, the project was led by Leonard Cheshire as the head of the consortium with funding from the UK aid that is now the FCDO. Um, and also we, within us, we, we had also uh, various different uh, partners that were able to bring in uh, specific expertise against what their mandates are and what their interests are. We had Andy, which is a Organization for Persons with Disabilities in Kenya. We had Bangladesh Business Disability Network in Bangladesh. We had CBM. We had European Disability Forum, which is an uh, uh, organization for persons with disabilities. We had Global Disability Innovation Hub, the ILO, the London School for Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, Plan International, and World Bank. Next. So as I had mentioned, we sought to see how do we increase economic empowerment for persons with disabilities, and not just persons with disabilities, but women and men with disabilities through the use of technology, the use of gender transformative um, strategy in solutions within the target countries. Just to see how then do we improve the economic inclusion and also the, their well-being within their uh, target countries. Next, please. So our approach to, to delivery was against the following. That one, we have persons with disabilities at the center, looking at them and engaging them to see what is it as I'd mentioned, their needs, their interests and their aspirations. Secondly, we wanted to test, develop, uh, to develop, test and validate sustainable innovative uh, practices and more so using digital and technology-based solutions to access and promote the retention of work for persons with disabilities. And we know why we do this. Well, uh, uh, Traditionally, persons with disabilities have been locked out of workplaces because of the various different um, challenges that they have and, uh, and also what the environment presents. So we using digital and technology solutions, we've, we've set, we set out to check, is it possible to 
cut out those challenges that persons with disabilities face in accessing and re being retained in work. These are things to do with, uh, with, uh, uh, with uh, environmental challenges, things to do with uh, distance, things to do with, uh, uh, to do with uh, flexibility, inflexibility of workplaces. And also we are seeing an upsurge of the use of assistive technology, which we could be able now to to leverage on to promote digital solutions for persons with disability. And then influence global and national development agenda, as, as we mentioned through the gender sensitive and transformative approaches together with safe programming. Um, at this juncture, I would be able, I would invite you to watch with us uh, a video of the deliverables that we were able to achieve within the project. Thank you. On a busy Dhaka street, Nisha checks she has the right money to pay for her rickshaw. I am a human being. I have rights, but due to my vision, I cannot uh, enjoy my rights properly. Joshir is at the market in his wheelchair. He pays for some groceries. Personal disabilities are not offered a fair pay in the workplace in some places. A woman works at her computer and a mechanic hammers metal. So I think it's very difficult for a person with disability to have a good job. Governments and workplaces have a responsibility to ensure that we have open and inclusive and accessible job market and workplaces for persons with disabilities. Eye to eye, innovation to inclusion. Jane Wamugu, NCPWD Kenya. The Constitution of Kenya 2010 as stipulates that there should be progressive per percent of persons with disabilities in employment in the public sector. Elizabeth Shakamiri, Eye to Eye. It does not speak about private sector or civil society. HRs were skeptical about uh, employing persons with disabilities. Joseph Gary, Death Empowerment, Kenya. Many employers and bosses need awareness about disability issues For example, they demand high qualifications in education that limit deaf people's access to jobs. Grace Araba, job seeker. I went to high school. I had to work very hard, but I did okay. In the outside world, life became so different for me. There were no jobs. I really wanted to go to college but I didn't know how. Shilpi Shathi, employee. Even though I am eligible for the job, when they saw me, I am no longer eligible because I am disabled. A busy Dhaka street. Joshia Shangma, job seeker. If we look at the social infrastructure in our country, most of the job places are not accessible. Nishat walks upstairs into a building. Mateza Khan, BBDN. Previously, we've always heard employers saying we can't find candidates in a centralized way. Similarly, candidates saying we can't connect to employers who would necessarily consider people with disabilities. Angel Perez, I2I. The I2I is a um, three-year program where we aim to improve the access to employment for persons with disabilities in Kenya and Bangladesh. A young man uses the NCPWD career portal. One of the key aspects of our program was to test innovative approaches to accessing employment in both countries. Joshia looks for a job. I registered in i 2 i job portal, uploaded all of my information there, and it came out like a CV. Shilpi works at her desk. CSID ticket. My CV was submitted through i 2 i from partner CSID. There was a job fair happening there. They arranged this job for me through that job fair. Joshia Shangma. I got my first uh, internship in Unilever. I worked there for six months and I have seen the changes that was coming. As employers are now aware of disability related rights to access an opportunity to join a workplace and uh, contribute. Nishat enters the Berger Paints office. She works with colleagues. Rupali Chowdhury, Berger Paints. People with disabilities, they cannot be left out. Without them, economic development of this country cannot happen. Some responsibility must be performed by the private sector. Elizabeth Shakamiri. We are glad that uh, from the i 2 i project, private sector has started thinking about disability inclusion and saying they want to get to this point. At a bakery, some women ice cakes. So i 2 i has 
tested and has evidence to show that private sector is in a position to do that. A man and a woman discuss work in an office. She leaves using a walking stick. Joseph Gary. The deaf community has really benefited from eye to eye. They are registering for more job opportunities and have access to vocational training. About 120 deaf youths have gotten jobs through the project. Mateza Khan. We'd like to see many more chambers of commerce and employers associations across the country come into the disability inclusion space so we can bridge that gap between the demand side and supply side. Three men look at a computer. Two men fix an engine. Spencer Lugalia, employee. If we are able to absorb this person with disability as soon as they start their undergraduate or their vocational training, uh, they are not uh, seen as a person with disability. They are seen uh, out of their own experience and of what they are able to provide for the job market. A deaf man hands his CV to an employer at an interview. Shilpi wears a headset, then talks to a colleague. I'm very happy to get the job and I am very well now. Here I am working, where I am a disabled girl, but they will never think of me like that. Jane Wamugu. What I would want to see is employment of persons with disabilities being at the same level with the rest. Colleagues talk in an office. Joshia searches Google. i 2 i is like a mentor for us. They're providing us training, job fairs where we can meet the employers. Nishat is on a tea break with colleagues. By what i 2 i is doing, I'm feeling much more confident and much more uh, have the belief in myself right now. I have the right to educate standard of living. Dignity. Equal opportunities and equal pay. i 2 i Innovation to Inclusion. Lena Cheshire, supported by UK Aid. Thank you. Um, I'll welcome now my colleague Anhel for the next uh, presentation. Hello. Um, uh, as I said, uh, I work as an innovation um, um, lead on the on the program, and I manage all the sort of the development and the thinking behind uh, the innovative solutions that we implemented in the I2I. Next slide, please. So the I2I came up from uh, a series of uh, research that we conducted and uh, exercises that we did in both countries, in Kenya and Bangladesh, where we wanted to, um, where we decided to sort of digitalize uh, um, a model um, of accessing employment. So we thought about the journey that users or persons with disabilities were taking to go into employment. And we thought, how we could use and leverage innovative solutions to improve um, uh, the, the experience through, through digital, digitally enhanced technologies. So the five more pillars were identification of persons with disabilities or outreach to persons with disabilities, onboarding, um, a skills assessment um, to better understand the career interests and the skills, um, a skill development, um, then a job matching to platforms and then finding ways of continuously improving the in the model through innovative solutions and access to workforce technologies. Next. So the way it is translated was in a sort of series of uh, more uh, in detail uh, aspects of these, uh, of what uh, the digital pathway might look like. So it was, uh, we thought about registration, following what are the questions to be able to get as much details as possible uh, to better understand the needs of persons with disabilities. Um, skills assessment to really understand uh, what were their skills and what kind of career aspirations they have. Um, the, this was all then uh, provided through a, a sort of career advice engine powered by AI, which would recommend people what kind of um, jobs they wanted to go on to do, what kind of training they needed to have, um, which then was translated into sort of a set of uh, basic soft skills learning training that we developed. Um, this is a skill training and also uh, a series of additional, more specialized digital skills uh, modules that were provided either face-to-face -face or through the uh, already existing on the platforms that we work with. And finally, the platform was meant to match uh, users with, uh, with the potential job space and their skills. Next. Now I'm gonna bring it back to Elizabeth to give us an example of how it worked in Kenya. Uh, thank you, Anhel. Next, please. So we, in Kenya, we 
took a multi-partner uh, initiative and we looked at um, how best we could be able to harness each other's strengths and who was strong where and we'd be able to, to pull our different um, strengths and expertise in promoting the employment of persons with disabilities. As we've already mentioned what I2I sought out to do, we looked for the National Council for Persons with Disabilities and partnered with it. The National Council for Persons with Disabilities is the government body mandated to promote the inclusion of persons with disabilities. So from them, we were able to, to get, uh, of course, uh, being uh, the national body, they, they have national presence and they also have the, the mobilizing capacity to be able to bring in the job seekers or the, the persons with disabilities who want to improve on, uh, on on their career progression. We also looked for uh, a company that was um, had advanced technology in terms of a recruitment system, and we were able to settle for Fuzu through a tendering process in a way that we were able to, to see um, what the project, the, the, the uh, the civil society groups within the project I2I I were bringing in the disability inclusion expertise. Uh, NCPWD was bringing in their mandate and their mobilizing capacity, and FUZU was bringing in the uh, advanced technology and the digital architecture to be able to promote the the uh, the the platform that we were looking for. And within that, we were hoping to have an all-in-one uh, service that will be able to be very beneficial to persons with disabilities. Next. So um, the National Council for Persons with Disabilities, what uh, uh, career portal, what now is being referred to the NCPWD career portal is a digital space that is AI, artificial inter intelligence powered um, with, with the system, as I've mentioned from FUZU. We had the job matching uh, uh, provision and we also have the e-learning uh, e-learning provision, which my colleague Angel will be talking much later more about it. It's fully accessible with a uh, double A uh, web accessibility uh, standard. And the, the, the URL is there, ncpwd.fuzu.com, which you, I could welcome you to be able to just log in and see how does the portal look and how does it work and how does it function. Next. Beyond the NCPWD career portal, we realized even for us, the e-learning modules that we were putting in the portal, we needed to make sure that we are also giving a wholesome approach to that in terms of giving other, uh, other services to, uh, to, to our users. That included targeted outreach through social media. We also had regional hubs that uh, were equipped to digital gadgets, laptops, de desktops um, for persons who otherwise uh, do not have access to a digital gadget. Also, they do not have consistent access to internet. We also provided counseling and face-to-face -face training through uh, inclusion officers and our key partners. And we also checked to see even um, over and above the targeted outreach that we have offline access to the portal and offline um, uh, targeted outreach, outreach to, our, to our users through SMS and also chat services uh, through one of our leading mobile service providers in the country. And also something that was so key within the project, one of the innovations was we were able to also provide um, our users with uh, a small stipend under the access to work scheme because we had done a research to find out what are these extra costs that come with the employment of persons with disabilities. Um, in this case, maybe extra uh, transport or uh, fare to maybe a uh, workplace because uh, a person has visual impairment and they need to pay extra um, uh, transport to maybe their guide or maybe to the support person. Next, please. And I would at this juncture invite my colleague Angel to take us through the e-learning modules. Thanks, Elizabeth. So what we needed to do was to identify uh, um, a set of e-learning modules uh, that we needed to um, put on these platforms to be able to cover the basic needs of some of these skills that we had to identify people were uh, needing to develop in order to access the, um, the jobs uh, that were being offered. So we decided to, uh, to develop some uh, uh, e-learning that needed to be accessible uh, in terms of uh, web content accessibility guidelines. It needed to be inclusive, so uh, 
uh, users with disabilities should be able to identify this themselves and their experiences in those modules. Um, uh, it will have been recommended upon the, the assessment. Uh, these courses need to be self-paced self and being able to access um, uh, offline um, because of the, 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 the kind of context in which people were accessing these modules. And we decided to develop a team of skills modules and five uh, digital skills modules with the addition of uh, advanced digital literacy training that was offered face-to-face uh, -face, um, outside the platform, but also some of them uh, through the already available modules in the platform that we partnered with. Next. The way we selected the um, e-learning provider was through a tendering process, making a, a, a local market scan, identifying um, e-learning providers that could develop inclusive and accessible um, e-learning modules. We developed a, a sort of terms of reference and went through a, a brief um, a process of approval through our donor, the F FCDO. Um, next, please. So um, the, we partnered with LAS, an, an organization specialized on, on, on learning and, and who, were, who understood very well the brief about disability and inclusion. Um, they began with conducting user research to really understand what were the needs of the learning needs of the users that we were tapping into. Um, and, and they worked with the face-to-face -face, um, training that had to really develop to digitalize that uh, based on both of these feedbacks. Um, the e-learning <clears throat> e uh, was then tested by our users, uh, but not only that, uh, our users uh, participated in the development of e-learning. So if you were to take any of these e-learning modules, you will see experiences uh, of users who have been developing content for the actual e-learning. Next. One of the key aspects of the e-learning is universal design for learning features, which means that no matter what your learning style or your learning difficulties are, uh, or your difficulties to access in learning, you have different ways or different means of engaging with information. That might mean that you, the same concept or the same topic could be taught to you through either audio, video, sign language, uh, a diversity of activities and engagement activities that allows you to get to the same learning goal as everybody else but not necessarily having to follow the same path as everybody else. Next. These are the set of modules that we develop. Uh, mostly are grouped into interpersonal, uh, personal and interpersonal skills, workplace inclusion, ready for work skills, and basic IT skills. Next. Um, we won an, an, an award for the modules that we develop and to the level of accessibility, um, Learning Technology International Award, uh, the bronze medal for development of these modules. Now I'm, I'm going to show you a, a brief uh, introduction to these modules uh, of, and their features. So here is one of the accessible modules that we built for the eye to eye project. So here on the welcome page, at the bottom, you'll see uh, the three uh, part structure that we've described to you to aid in familiarity, but also navigation uh, for the audience using assistive technology and for those with uh, neurodiversity as well. So let's have a look at the concept here. So this is where we're telling them about uh, what we're going to cover. Um, there's the opportunity here to turn on or off um, the sign language video. So those are, um, they supplement each of the videos in the whole uh, module and you turn them on or off in, in this one place. Um, we've got some accessible um, interactions here. Uh, we've got an example of a trainer video, uh, which has closed captions and also a transcript there. Um, further down, we have some more uh, interactions um, and click to reveal type things. All of this is, uh, is fully accessible. And then at the bottom, we have the navigation. So if you're using keyboard navigation, you're tabbing through the page using your keyboard, you would end up here at the bottom. So that means it's very quick and easy for you to select the next section to move on to. So this is the in practice session section. So this is where we see our user generated uh, video. So we've got two here from Sherleen, um, who is uh, really quite a, a formidable um, young lady. So um, let's watch Sh Sherleen's uh, video. My name here. is Sherleen Tonine. Set realistic goals. I took this upon myself to actually set goals that I would love to achieve by the end of this year. So I decided that by the end of the year, I want to, to have enrolled into master's class 
and start my master's degree. I would want to have launched my company, Magento Dynasty, and I would want to have. So quite an inspirational lady. It was brilliant to have Shirlene as part of the uh, of the project. Uh, you can see how ambitious she is, and uh, she. Okay, um, I just have to cut that video short just for the sake of time, but just to give you an idea of what the of what the modules look like and and how they work. I'm going to pass back on to Elizabeth, who's going to give us some uh, insights on user feedback and key learnings from the I2I. Okay, thanks, Anhel. Um, so um, we did we we always. Uh, continuously do uh, user surveys just to see how well we are faring on um, as concerns uptake of the modules and even completion of the of the modules from the user profiles that we've done uh, the user profiles that uh, we've been able to pick uh, from the surveys we keep on uh, conducting is that 17 percent of the users on the portal are 18 to 24 years old 26% are 32 years and above. And whilst the, the highest number, 57%, is between 25 to 31 years. And to us, we see that as um, the group that is um, maybe just fine, just uh, graduated either from colleges or universities, and they're raring to go and are able to maybe pick up quickly on what is, um, uh, what is needed for them within, to, for them to, to thrive in the job market. As concerns gender, we see that 76% um, are male, 22% are female, and 2% prefer not to say. But you can actually see the discrepancy as concerns um, female uh, uptake, uh, the uptake of the modules by females and the uptake of the modules by uh, males. Next, please. On the distribution of courses that Angel has taken us through, we see that of, the, of those that are of great interest are job interview skills, disability rights, equality and inclusion, uh, problem solving, as well as time management. You can actually see even self-advocacy skills is high up there, just to see that um, persons with disabilities want to know how to take on jobs, want to know how to, 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 to be able to handle interviews. They're also uh, interested to see how do they fit in as concerns disability rights, equality, equality inclusion, and also um, uh, problem solving. And then also very key, which is very key within our workplace, time management, which is very important. Next, please. Uh, with the interaction with the e-learning modules, uh, how many found it difficult, easy, neutral, very easy. We are glad to see that uh, a great number, almost over 50%, almost 60% stamped the the e-learning modules easy and very easy. Uh, a small number said it's neutral and difficult were quite low there at about 4%. How beneficial are the modules to you? Remember, we've already told you what the, 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 the modules are and what the persons with disabilities are quite interested to, to, to read on or to learn on. 76%, uh, we are glad to say, found it very important. 22% said moderately important, and just 2% said not important. Next, please. Um, and of course, feedback that we really yearn to always get, what is it that the users really want to, to, to be able to, to see more on the, on the portal and in terms of content on the e-learning uh, e modules, self-awareness, self-acceptance, employee relations, data analysis. Um, remember, we thought that we are reaching out to persons who maybe want to get into employment, uh, wage the employment, but we are getting a good number saying they want to know how to start uh, a business and even to manage. Uh, things to do with YouTube uh, content uh, creation, uh, project management, financial, anger management, and very important, psychological support and matters to do with mental health. And again, uh, which is we found very, uh, very important to us, them requesting that they want more questions in the quiz section to be able to 
keep on assessing themselves how well they're faring on uh, in the e-learning and also online certification for especially accreditation and for them also to present maybe in their next interview or even in their job application. Next, please. We would at this point uh, 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 show you a video as concerns the testimonies uh, that we've gotten from those who have uh, undertaken the e-learning modules. Soft skill training was very important because we have been able to engage with the Innovation to Inclusion program, the project, and it has been one of the very important and beneficial activity that has been going around the country. I can say through the retraining, we have been able to know how to write, compose our, our resumes. We have been able to know how to write whatever part from the start on how developing personal profile until the present the present where we write even the work experience and everything on how we can do it we have also been trained on various behavior on how we can behave at job places and how we can carry ourselves through whenever we are employed good evening everyone my name is jacob sijaono Uma. i'm one of the beneficiaries of i to i project and uh, it's my pleasure to share with you some of the experiences that I've had with the project. Now, uh, I would also want to talk shortly about the training that was re recently concluded. Uh, we benefited so much, and me personally, I benefited because some of the topics that were taught there are topics that uh, touches on things that happen at workplace. For example, uh, one of the teachers talked about time management and usually when somebody's at work, they usually appraise a staff according to, on the basis of how you manage your time. So good time management was taught during the training and it is something that I benefited from. Again, uh, during the training, we were taught about how to set goals. And uh, we were told by the teacher that when you are setting goals, the goals needs to be smart. And uh, the goals need to, needs to be smart in what sense? First, the goal has to be specific. When you are setting a goal, you have to know what you want to what you want to achieve specifically. Then the goals have to be measurable. Then there are things that you should be able to attain, and then they have to be realistic and time bound. You have to uh, to to do them within a specified period of time. So we were taught about uh, setting goals. Now another thing that we benefited from the training, we had an opportunity to interact with other partners. And uh, at, uh, at, the end of the, uh, at, at the end of the training, uh, we were linked with other partners who are also willing to, to teach us on other subjects. So the training was generally good. We underwent a soft skill training and it is very important and it is very applicable to our places. I remember we had uh, self-awareness training, we had confidence building training, we were trained on time management, on job retention, and are very relevant and applicable to our daily lives. So I got a job as a data clerk with the Kisumu Locots, and it was well. And due to the trainings, I managed to apply for another job and also got employed as the clinical nutritionist at Ahero County Hospital. The workplace is friendly. Uh, the receptions from the other staffs are quite also friendly, and working at that particular place is uh, also very friendly. The support that we get from Eye to Eye, the Innovation to Inclusion project, uh, it has helped reach a majority of persons with disabilities, and it helps link persons with disabilities to the employers through the use of the portal, and even the several trainings we get uh, that are very relevant and also we get to uh, opportunities to meet with employers so it is very relevant and it is uh, we appreciate what they're doing to persons with disabilities thank you hi this is joshua Shangma. i would like to thank leonard cheshire and their i 2 project for giving me this opportunity to prove myself it is because of them i've started my career as a brand marketing intern at unilever bangladesh limited I would say to every youth with disability to keep faith in yourself because ability is in our heart. Thank you. Thank you. Um, 
Also, the learnings we've we've been able to pick uh, from the outputs is that um, accessible e-learning is very important for us and also for persons with disabilities to increase their employability skills and self-confidence. Content must also be inclusive for persons with disabilities to really, really interact with content and be able to, to feel that the content is geared to them. They must also see themselves in the content that we present. Job matching using artificial intelligence and also matching of skill, um, uh, skills and soft skills that uh, uh, persons with disabilities uh, require is very uh, well powered and also very uh, well uh, uh, promoted with artificial intelligence because um, beyond that there's no hand of man and it's possible for, for this to be done more effectively. Collection of essential data during registration is important because it's that essential data that supports the person with disability to be able to get the best match in terms of uh, jobs and also the best match as concerns uh, the skills that are required for them maybe to, to do a particular application or even for their career advancement and uh, progression and even just for for them to be able to, uh, to, to improve themselves, even just for uh, uh, their own personal, uh, personal progression. And also it supports the labor market in, in a way that we are able to see what is, what is emerging, what's, what, are the, what are the trends that we'll be able maybe to leverage on as uh, service providers. And uh, very important is that technology has a great potential to serve persons with disabilities holistically in terms of uh, 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 provision of uh, remote learning, as we've seen, remote job matching. But also, we shouldn't uh, we shouldn't sh shun the in-person services because it's that blend that brings a uh, brings a uh, better output in terms of uh, improving the employment of persons with disabilities. Next. As concerns uh, the learnings that we've gathered from process is that um, user centered design is very important. We can, as you've seen, even as my colleague Angel has shown that uh, every step we made sure persons with disabilities were part of that. So it is an important and critical component of improving accessibility standards with the products and the services we, pro we provide. Um, the, the bit about testing uh, models in multiple contexts, the use of continuous feedback as, as, as we have shown you the surveys that we keep on take, uh, uh, taking within the portal, the, the scoping of re uh, scoping researches that we keep on doing to make sure that we are up to date, we know what our users want, we know what our users are experiencing, and we are always able to, to, to listen and also uh, adapt to to change to depending on the on the the what the users require and what the market demands and also uh, from the process we are seeing that um, private digital technology companies and also what is happening in the international development arena the harnessing of both processes uh, that we can be able to to forge much more ahead in terms of uh, inclusion, in terms of design, development, and delivery of digital tools, because we'll be using um, advanced technology. Uh, we'll be also be able to uh, promote best practices, seeing to it that we are we are we are, we are cognizant of what maybe the uh, private companies want, what the de international development programs are already doing in a way that we can be able to, to replicate what is being done at global levels at our localized uh, uh, positions. Maybe for, for in our case, like in Kenya, we've been able to adapt and learn from what the international uh, practices are already doing. Next, please. Um, in all this, we can say that we were not without challenges, which is normal within a project. And even when we set out to, to, to set out a, a new product as, or when we set out to promote a new service. We, we agree, as we said, that technology has the potential to transform the employment of persons with disabilities, but there's still a lot of uh, 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 poor provision of the complete lack of uh, technology, especially in rural areas or even urban poor areas, where it's it's hard to get uh, for users either to get um, the digital tools and also the issues to do with internet connectivity. As we've shown you on the survey, 
this uh, critical female male digital divides, uh, divide where we are seeing very few women with disabilities with ICT oriented skills and also the savviness as compared to men with disabilities. The age divide, uh, of course, uh, Young, younger people are more uh, tech savvy, but we realize uh, even as we promote digital technology, the older persons with disabilities also require employment. And some of these solutions, if they don't also appeal to them or they're not geared for them, they'll be left out in the long run, which um, doesn't give us uh, uh, the, the output that we really want. Um, access to assistive technologies is still quite limited. Um, even in terms of even accessible websites, accessible job sites, or accessible um, e-learning platforms beyond what we have been able to present to you uh, on the, uh, as concerns the portal, which now means that even persons with disabilities, it's difficult for them to still get uh, more knowledge from other sites or get uh, other services from other sites, given that assistive technology is still limited. Um, ICT and disability policy provisions are quite dis disjointed. This makes it very difficult for adherence to, to, to come in and also come compliance and also to measure and evaluate how well are we uh, uh, progressing, maybe for, for example, as Kenya, as concerns uh, disability inclusion in, within uh, ICT. And at, in the long run, Whilst we've presented to you what we are able, we've been able to do as the eye to eye project, the disability employment gap is still so big and it's critical for all of us to be able to see how do we improve skilling and employment services for persons with disabilities by making them more accessible and inclusive. And as we finish, um, we are glad to say that through the i to i project we've been able to demonstrate what it means to what it means for digital technology and what digital technology can do towards uh, improving disability inclusion what we've been able to show you through over and above the job matching what we've been able to see under the e-learning modules and it's possible that through e-learning um, uh, we can be able to to counteract the many, many challenges that persons with disabilities have suffered for quite a long time in terms of access to education and access to skills, because without that, then they will not be able to get the needed employment or even get um, the, the, the right employment to match, the, the, uh, to match their, as I keep on saying, their needs and aspiration, and also just the confidence to be able to access and progress through the job market. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for joining us, uh, for joining us, me and my colleague Angel, and uh, we would now uh, invite you, uh, invite you for any questions that you would, you you may have for us. Um, we got. Uh, Do I could. Um, who would either uh, read some questions from the chat that you um, you've um, already been writing down? Uh, but if anybody would like to um, turn on the mic and ask the questions directly, please feel free to do so. All right. Well, maybe Annabelle, would you like to um, introduce yourself and maybe ask us a couple of questions? I've just sent Elizabeth a couple of questions relating to gender, um, and I will monitor the chats and send around questions as they come. Yes. Um, yes, An Annabelle, I've, I've seen on the chat uh, 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 a recurring question. What, are, what do we hope to do with the gender gap? And what have we been doing under the project to be able to, to close that gap between uh, the male and, and females? Um, we, under the project, we had a specific project that was targeting women um, and uh, training women, um, especially in terms of, uh, um, of skills and also in terms of being able to seize opportunities. We've also, as I've mentioned, uh, uh, the bit about teaching, uh, uh, providing regional hubs 
in a way that um, even if you do not have a digital uh, gadget, you can be able to to get which which are quite centralized in the three urban areas in Kenya to be able to walk walk to a regional hub and be able to um, to uh, to apply for a job or even take e-learning modules because what we have presented are almost what we call cyber cafes and someone is able to work there so we would had a targeted program for women within the project and one of those things was to make sure that we are providing for them opportunities to be able to um to, to overcome what they don't have like for example the digital gadgets um secondly um when we do uh, filtering when we uh, do um uh when we are doing our outreaches we make sure that there is a whole targeted group and we make sure that women with disabilities are part of that some of these things are also structural where we find that uh, women with disabilities may not already have even the economic means to be able to to reach um, to get what uh, the the assets that require them to be able to participate in the program but that's why we also make sure that um the the jobs that we have we make sure that women with disabilities are also targeted and good um uh, good uh, uh, provisions are given to make sure they, inter they, 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 they are able to attend interviews, they're able to follow on um, any needed uh, follow-ups to the job application through the access to work scheme that we are conducting in a way that any cost that will come with that, the project will be able to, to cover. Thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth. Um, I'm gonna be taking another question um can you please talk about what kind of labor market analysis and what kind of conditions in the labor market might have been used to inform i2i's approach in kenya and bangladesh um i i'll ask elizabeth i don't know if you know a lot more about the market research because i wasn't here during that period um elizabeth are you able to, re to reply to the answer the question sorry yes yes yeah um the what we did was a market analysis at project level. Um, unfortunately, within Kenya, we've not had any um, government or wide scale uh, labor survey or labor market analysis. Um, generally, I think the last one that was held in Kenya was in 1976. And uh, we even thought that within the project, the project we would be able to do a labor market survey for persons with disabilities. But that was not possible because um, um, there were other competing uh, issues. But what we were able to do was a project level labor market analysis specific to the needs of the project in terms of uh, uh, the need areas. That's just Nairobi, Mombasa, Kisumu. Those are our uh, our 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 urban areas in uh, in Kenya, and we were able to only map um, above eighteen and persons and private sector only. We were not even able to go to other uh, sector players because one we were confined by what the project was able to do. Yes, and I think that was also the same with Bangladesh. Um, there's another question. Um, how do you how do you do in terms to make this project sustainable? Uh, to make this project sustainability? Um, I can answer some other question. Um, when we first uh, identify or we plan the model of the digital employment pathway, we were very aware that we needed to identify ways uh, of making this uh, long term sustainable plan or, or, or mm -hmm. an, an, an its impact. Um, so in, in doing so, we had the option of um, developing digital products from scratch, which you, as an advantage, you could be developing accessible digital employment platforms or any kind of products from the very beginning, which often is, you, is easier in terms of um, ideating new, uh, new products and services. However, um, because of the nature of the program, uh, we, we decided that we would take a better advantage on engaging uh, private sector, so that's employers who were um, advertising jobs and um, particularly if we if we sort of partner with existing employment platforms to be able to reach out to those employers but also benefit from the um, experience and expertise of these employment platforms it's important to say as well that although you know as organizations we have a lot of expertise in disability and inclusion 
um, you know, when it comes to digital and how uh, the digital work, it was, you know, for, for us, it was an opportunity to leverage the expertise of, of um, services that were already online. So we decided to partner in, in both in both countries with the two of the largest platforms, the uh, employment platforms that are offering jobs and engage with employers on a, on a daily basis. Um, and one of the reasons behind this was as well that um, by making those employment platforms uh, accessible, or in the, Kenya, in the case of Kenya, they helped us develop a, a, an individual platform, but they, the platform itself, which was FUSU, also became uh, compliant to, to web content accessibility guidelines. So this means that uh, in one way, we, we, we ensure that we had ma maximum impact. And in the other one, we also knew that at any case, what will remain will always be a, an accessible digital, digital product for everyone. In the case of Kenya, the the platform that was developed was developed under the National Council, and uh, it was the National Council has uh, three different levels of access uh, to continue, or three different uh, options to continue uh, providing the services under this platform that can be adjusted or they are adjustable to the specific um, uh, funding needs uh, for the continuation of the program. Um, similar to the previous question, um, I don't know if I'm missing another one, but um, how effective did you find working with private sector services? Where, where, you, <clears throat> where you secure private partnerships, and what were the pros and cons? Um, I must say, for me, uh, um, I really feel like I'll say a couple of things. Maybe you can say some, Elizabeth. But I think for me, one of the greatest things was to engage with um, services that potentially hadn't been thinking about accessibility in the first place. And it was really important to see the sort of domino effect that this had, because the moment you engage with the, you know, with the senior level managers to then with the developers and how the developers learn to create accessible services, how this awareness that was being translated and uh, through, through working with them, it was very, very exciting to see that happening. At the same time, there were all the challenges where People, you know, that I think in the scope of the project, uh, companies and in general, people think that turning something into an accessible product might potentially be easier, but, you know, it, it, ha it doesn't come without its challenges. And, and sometimes um, uh, it can be pro it, it proves a little bit difficult to communicate that well, the, the challenges of that might face. Elizabeth, do you have some more? Yes, yeah. um, I could say maybe for the case in Kenya, um, uh, we do not have laws that compel pass, uh, private sector companies to, to employ persons with disability. The laws that we have currently uh, support, uh, compel public sector. So, um, and I like what Angel says, this was uh, not traditional uh, for private sectors to, uh, to bring in persons with disabilities. So one, um, the, the good thing of it, those that knew the value of, pers of having persons with disabilities as uh, employees were really embraced uh, the notion of uh, us supporting them with uh, promoting disability inclusion with their workplaces. Um, the other good thing about private sector is that um, private sector wants to uh, to see how effective and efficient they can be able to do something. So um, it was a great uh, opportunity for us to also showcase and also work together with private sector to see and to see and test the technologies that we are presenting because they were saying, "How do we do this more cheaply?" And more cost effective, so it, uh, quite uh, uh, quite uh, welcoming for the ideas that we were giving them. Um, um, another, uh, maybe the the cons to it is that um, unless uh, maybe the leadership uh, at uh, private sector. Uh, in private sector companies uh, uh, do not, if they do not uh, uh, embrace disability inclusion, it becomes difficult for those under to also uh, uh, to also pick up. Of course, we were, be, we were able to work with very aggressive HRs, human resource managers, uh, who were able to run with what we were saying about disability inclusion, but it was very, very, very critical to get the buy-in from the senior leaders, because at the end of the day, private sector is about profit, and we needed to also showcase to them that they're still able to make profit, and if not, bring in more, especially once the community and the society sees that they are also making those who are harder to reach or those who are not included before being part of uh, workplaces. 
I think we reached the, the, the end of the session. Um, I just want to say thank you everyone for uh, participating and uh, for uh, listening and watching our, our presentation. Um, and I hope you everyone have a good day. Elizabeth. Um, thank you so much uh, for being with us. And thank you so much for sh uh, allowing us to share with you what we've been able to do with the I2I project. Thank you so much. Thanks.